I don't think Bob ever quite went this aggressively. Can you imagine if he was just like, okay, today we're going to paint a lovely landscape. Hi. It is not even mid-July yet, but oh, I'm feeling spooky. Oh, I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of summer. <laughs> To be fair, I feel like it's not entirely my fault. It's also just in my genes. To put it simply, I just took a DNA test, turns out I'm very white. Genetically, my body is optimized for stormy, rugged, British or Irish winters, tending to my crops or potatoes, perhaps covering my cows and horses with little jackets that I sewed by hand, sitting next to a crackling hearth. Not humid Massachusetts summers. So basically, it's um, happy spooky season. I'm kidding. It's always spooky season. But it is only July. So this weekend, I have a fellow lover of all things spooky coming to stay with me, and that is my friend Madeline. I thought it might be fun to have a beach day. I do not enjoy beaches. So in attempts to make this beach day enjoyable for me, I'm gonna make it spooky. I found a pretty good descriptor of what my channel is. Random bullshit, go! I don't know, I just felt like doing it, so we're gonna do it. My plan, I want to make a bathing suit. I've always loved this image, something similar to that. A pumpkin umbrella, some spooky glasses. Is this too ambitious? Quite possibly, but it's never stopped me before. It may result in mediocrity, but it's never stopped me. Because my brain is so large, I didn't think to order anything online for this project. Today, is going to be a lot of hunting for things that I need. We will be heading to the fabric store, possibly the thrift store, and also job lot, which always makes me feel like I'm walking into a zombie apocalypse film, which I suppose is on brand for this video. Also, I'm very warm. Do you wanna hear the world's shortest sad story? <clears throat> Wool shorts in July. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> Shows you how long I haven't been to Ocean State Job Lot. Well, shit. <laughs> Let's talk about that, baby. Let's talk about humidity. <laughs> Thank you, I am here all week. All right, if this isn't fate, Nailed it. Okay. I can feel the moisture on my body, and I'm not sure it's all mine. The air literally feels like. I can't get my foot out of my pocket. It feels like soup. Welcome to my channel. 90% of it is me complaining about the weather. It's my second day of working on this project, although technically it's day three because I tried filming yesterday and I felt real shitty about myself, so... It happens, okay? But we're back. I'm feeling very energized. It's not hot out. That means whiskey grandpa. Whiskey grandpa. Just get me a banjo, a front porch, and maybe a barrel to bathe in. Figured I might as well commit fully. Let me show you what I got, including beach umbrella. These are surprisingly hard to find and it's also not orange. So we got some work to do. I went to like three different stores looking for one of these babies, ended up wandering the aisles of Dick's Sporting Goods like John Travolta. <laughs> Let me show you the fabric. I got this stretchy black fabric. And then I got this sparkly cobweb material. Ooh, probably got way too much of this, but it's good to have. I suppose it's important to talk about the design that I'm thinking. Taking that vintage picture, I want to make a cute little two-piece with sort of a halter top kind of thing, and then a skirt for the bottom because I don't know. I just, I, I don't feel comfortable in bathing suits. I don't like people looking at me bum. I'm gonna whip out that fabric paint and we're gonna try to add some cute spider webs on this and make it nice and spooky. The cobweb fabric, I want to make like a cute little overskirt to put over my skirt. 
So that's the fabric. Grabbed a bunch of fabric paint for the umbrella. I would definitely recommend just getting an orange umbrella first, but sometimes my friends, when you put off ordering things in advance, you have to become the MacGyver of crafts. And then the last thing that I got, cheapo sunglasses. Okay. All right, let's try that again. I want to add some bat wing details on the edge of these. So it will look something like, you feel me? We've got quite a lot to do. <laughs> I'm nervous and I have to blow my nose. For the bathing suit, I am gonna use this vintage pattern that I have for at least the top of it. I have this jumpsuit pattern that I grabbed for the actual bathing suit part. I think I'm just gonna do a circle skirt, just a very short one. In theory, <laughs> it's not that much work. She said with about 13% confidence that this sentiment was actually true. Gentle. Like I said, we're just gonna use the top of this. I'll take a tourist. It actually looks like I only need four pieces. Bodice front and then the bodice back and then each of those have a facing, which is basically just a lining layer. Huh? I'm a little nervous. I've never made a bathing suit before. Let's get cutting this out of the fabric, I guess. Well, let's get spooky in July, beach. I'm just saying, if no one has thought about making a cloak out of spandex, they probably should. Although Death Eaters in spandex is not a sentence I think anyone should picture. So after using my very professional weights to hold down the pattern pieces, I start cutting them out of the fabric. So although this pattern was technically easy in terms of how many pattern pieces there were, there were a lot of darts. We're talking like 50 somethings at an American Legion level amount of darts. So I marked those all out with a white pencil and then pinned them so that I could go sew them. then took the facing layer and put it inside out on top of the outer layer, which was right side in. Yeah, that's right. And then I folded back the edges and pinned. This material reminded me of those book socks that you used to cover your books in high school. Forget looking like a snack. I want to look like a biology book. Oh, I'm out of breath from going up the stairs. <sighs> All right, so here's the top. It actually looks like a bathing suit. <laughs> I'm gonna add a couple straps here and just do a halter top situation. All right. Perfectionists, ye be warned, I kind of freehanded these straps. <laughs> so I ended up with four layers, two different straps. Then you sew around the edges, leaving one end open. And then usually I do a safety pin hack, but for this, it's stretchy enough that I could just kind of turn it inside out without any additional tools. Okay, moving on. Here are, I feel like my voice was really annoying just then. <laughs> Here are the pattern pieces for the, ew. Here are the pattern pieces for that jumpsuit, which is actually really convenient because they all have the waistline marked off and that's pretty much all I need from it. So it's not too bad. I'm gonna cut out, looks like eight pieces. P pieces, like Reese's pieces, even though it's Reese's pieces. Death before saying Reese's pieces instead of Reese's pieces. I said it, it's a controversial topic to bring up, but you know, sometimes we have to take a stand for what we believe in. I am going to get the fabric ready to cut all of those out. Now I'm not going to lie to you. After making myself this spandex diaper, I realized it looked like straight garbage. So I decided to scratch that and just use my spandex shorts underneath the skirt instead. Now look, I like to think of myself as a human with average intelligence, but nothing makes me feel dumber than making a circle skirt. Basically what you have to do is figure out the radius of your waist and then how long you want the skirt to be and then you kind of anchor it down and measure it all the way across. 
I'll include the calculator that I used in the description, but basically it told me that my radius was four inches, but I thought because I folded it one more time than was illustrated that I could cut that in half, so I did two inches of a radius. Uh, turns out I was completely wrong about this. It looked like a skirt for ants. Now, thankfully this fabric is really, really stretchy, so I was able to stretch it over my waist and it fit fine, but I definitely should have just stuck with that four inch radius. All right, taking a break from the actual bathing suit, let's do the glasses, because I'm kind of excited for them. They are already kind of vintagey, but we're gonna make them outrageous, okay? What I'm gonna use is handy dandy foam clay. I'm basically just gonna extend these out into giant wings. I want to look like one of Bruce Wayne's gadgets, like I could take flight at any minute. Did I say foam clay? I meant a foam sheet, obviously. cosplay hack I use quick seal plus and you kind of just glob it in between the cracks and it looks really messy until you add a little bit of water and smooth it out and it really gives a nice effect Are you ready to do some painting? Cause we got a lot of it to do today. So I'm doing my best Bob Ross outfit. All you need is a dream in your heart. And we're gonna get to work. What we need to paint today and finish up today. The umbrella, the glasses, <laughs> pardon me. The spider webs on the bathing suit. And then eventually we need to do the outer skirt for the bathing suit. I think I'm gonna start with the biggest thing, which is the umbrella. I think I might be underestimating how large this is. <laughs> so, uh... Huh? Rotate it as needed? What do you think? <laughs> Not my best decision, but... Let's get started. Lovely orange color. Lots of it. We're just gonna paint. We're just gonna slab it on there. Now I know what you're thinking. What if it had just been better to go find an orange umbrella? Perhaps. <laughs> I don't think Bob ever quite went this aggressively. Can you imagine if he was just like, Okay, today we're going to paint a lovely landscape. Mm. Well, I'm gonna continue painting these panels orange and try not to think about my bad life decisions. You know, I'm pretty averse to bragging, but I got pretty good at this and I developed a pretty good technique. So, wondering how to phrase this and put on my resume. Technique. Two hours later. I have many regrets. So while we let that atrocity of an umbrella dry a little bit before I go in and add more colors and details, I get started on the swimsuit because that's probably the most important thing. I am going to take my fabric, fabric paint, and I'm just gonna kind of freehand some spider webs. I've been doodling spider webs on top of my school notes for my whole life, so I think it has prepared me for this moment right here. 
So I'm gonna start on the skirt. The top I'll probably have to do on my mannequin. Let's get to painting again. <laughs> Here's how I imagine the spiders in my ceiling are watching me paint what, for them, is the equivalent of a Thomas Kincaid painting. Actually, it would probably be more like this. <laughs> was significantly harder to do just because of my wobbly dress form and you don't have a flat surface to work on but I think it worked fine. If any of you have connections in spider community television, I have your people talk to my people. night kind of snuck up on me so I had to cram in a bunch of different crafts all in one so I made a little leaflet for my umbrella then I finished up the glasses by spraying them with Plasti Dip don't worry about it getting on the lenses it peeled right off <laughs> then I sprayed it with clear coat and just kind of spread that around with my fingers so I wouldn't get it on the lens and then for the outer skirt, I apologize for the rush job that this is, but basically I made a waistband with my waist measurements, enough so that I could fold it over, and I just gathered the cobweb fabric in between those two layers, and then added a button enclosure. Super simple, but I think it turned out pretty good. first reveal was um, kind of cursed. Just in case you were thinking, hey, you know what would be a great time to go to the beach? Right after a tropical storm. I'm here to tell you, no, <laughs> that's a bad idea. It is a truth universally acknowledged that sometimes filming doesn't go the way that you want it to. And you just kind of have to roll with it. We tried, we tried real hard, but the wind was absolutely <laughs> obnoxious. I just could not get any good shots of the outfit. It wasn't working out. And I also have a $50 permit ticket to prove it. <laughs> Cursed! It do be like it do be sometimes. Here it is! Zoom me out a little. So, a little bit of a wrap up. The bathing suit, I am super happy with. I will totally be wearing this again. Really stinking comfy. The bottom of this needs to be taken in a tiny bit. Are we surprised? I feel like I say that every single time. It's cute and I like it. The outer skirt, which you didn't really get to see much of. Like I said, it is just a piece of fabric folded over and then folded in at the edges, pinned the cobweb fabric in between and sewed right over it. And then I made button enclosures. It took me like maybe 20 minutes to make, but it goes on really easily. 
I think it's super cute. Come spooky time, I'll just throw over my skirts. The glasses, ow, it's a little sticky. Would it have been the easiest method to just order a pair of bat sunglasses that probably would cost me five to ten dollars? <laughs> Absolutely. I think these are fine. <laughs> They're a bit like eyeliner or eyebrows where they are sisters, not twins, perhaps cousins. This one I think came out perfect. It's the angle is great. And then this <coughs> one's a little too eager. The umbrella <laughs> actually really stinking cute. Not the cleanest job I've ever done. You can see the stripes through <laughs> the fabric paint even though I did go in and I did two layers, but I ended up running out of orange. So I am totally gonna bring this to the beach every single time I go. I think it's really cute and spooky. Again, not my most practical decision. If I had given myself more time, I would order an orange umbrella and then just add the stem, the leaf, and the shading. We have discussed this where I tend to make things a little bit just a smidgen more difficult for myself than they need to be. I feel like if I didn't do that, it wouldn't be on brand for me. So that's what we're gonna go with and I'm sticking to it. That's it. I had a lot of fun with it. I, I really enjoy projects where it's not just sewing and there's different elements to it. So I got to sew, I got to paint, I got to fabricate, contort my body into quite impressive monkey shapes that I didn't know I was capable of. Wow. Now, this is not gonna be the start of spooky content. Don't worry for all you Halloween Ebenezer Scrooges. I will continue with fall content probably towards the end of August. I just needed a break from summer, okay? Sometimes we just need some spooky content to get us through. <sighs> that is it. I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload almost every Friday and we have fun here. Do I have hair on my mic? Yep. And we have fun here. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Well, that was awful. Blah, 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 blah. Blah. <sighs> nope, just one. Okay. This is gonna take me a thousand years i've been drawing i've been doodling okay <laughs> but yeah i hope you guys are i don't know i feel like we haven't seen enough of frodo in this video spooky boy come here good boy that gelton john oh no